Shields up, Iron Breakers. We're kind of here coming at you with another video. Welcome back to Dauntless, and today we're going to be talking about the axe. Now, whether you're someone who is new to the game and you're considering axe to be one of your main weapons, or maybe you're someone who's been playing for a while and you've seen someone use the skill Grim Onslaught and you realize that your life would have no meaning if you did not give in to the Yeet Stick, welcome. This video is for you. So the axe is a weapon that is all about charging your attacks. You're going to have two basic attacks with the axe from the get-go. One of it is your vertical slice, and then you have your horizontal slice. Now, ideally, you're not going to be using them just like this. Oh, vertical slice, vertical slice, vertical slice, yay! That's not how you do it. You have to charge up your attacks, okay? Think of it like a great sword in Monster Hunter. So you keep the button pressed for a bit. This is your vertical slice. Bam! And you can do the same thing for your horizontal slice. Now, it is important to pay attention to when you release the button, because when you release the button is going to have an effect on a specific mechanic towards the axe, which is the resolve skill. Now, if you just keep the button pressed until the attack comes off, you get this. You know, it's a good attack, it's gonna deal some good damage, it's all good. But, if you keep the button pressed and release it the exact moment you reach level 3, you get that glowy thing going on in your character's body, and you're like, oh man, that looked way cooler. That right there is resolve. And what that means is while you are doing this, you cannot be stopped. The monsters cannot stagger you while you are in the middle of that animation. Now that does not mean that you're invincible. You're still gonna take the damage. So be careful when you use this. You gotta use this responsibly, but it is a good mechanic, you know, just in case the monster is trying to take a swipe at you that's going to interrupt your charged attack, you're gonna be able to power right through it. And you know, those minor swipes are not gonna hurt all that much. Most of the time. <laughs> anyway, uh, that is how the resolve mechanics works, and it works like that for any of the charge attacks, because you can do a follow-up charge attack after you do the first one. See this one? You can also get resolve out of that. So if you just focus on releasing the button at the very moment that you get the, the level three charge, you're going to do better with the ax in general. Uh, another important thing is that you charge every other attack. So for instance, you charge your first attack, you can't charge the next attack. The next attack is always going to be that poke, but you can not charge the attack after that one. So that, you poke again, and then you can charge this one. So that's going to take a little bit of getting used to if you're not used to how the axe works, but uh, that is how the charged attacks of the axe operate. Now, I've just been using the vertical slice, which gives you this combo into this, into this. Which is an okay combo, but you're not going to be using it most of the time. So let me show you guys the horizontal slice. Horizontal slice gives you this combo, but the advantage of the horizontal slice is that you can move while you are doing it. You can adjust, and then you can release. Whereas with the vertical slice, you're pretty much stuck in place. So you have to be really good at predicting the movements that the behemoths are going to make. So sometimes you might want to test it out with a different weapon so that you get accustomed to certain behemoths, and then you bring in the axe. Or if you're crazy, just bring in the axe and learn it the hard way. Either way, I'm not going to judge you. Now, the other thing that you want to keep in mind is that you can alternate between these different combos. So you can charge up with your vertical slice, and then you can move on to the horizontal slice, which is going to give you this attack. Which is different from the attack that you normally get if you just do the vertical slices. Right? This is the vertical slice combo. And the reason you're going to be wanting to change attacks mid-combo is because one of your most used combos is actually going to be vertical attack into horizontal attack into another horizontal attack into another horizontal attack. Now, this combo is particularly effective because once you charge up your axe to full power, every attack that follows it is going to contribute towards your determination meter. Now, you guys are like, wait a minute, what the hell's the determination meter? Top left-hand side, you will see that there is a gauge uh, right next to your health and stamina. As you hit the behemoths with charged attacks, that gauge is going to start filling up. And the cool thing about that gauge is that once it fills up, you can perform your special attack and that will level your gauge up and your axe will just flat out deal more damage. And you can charge that thing up to level three and your axe is going to subsequently always deal more and more damage. So you want to charge it up and you want to keep it charged up. Again, if you're coming from Monster Hunter, think of this as the longsword mechanic. So it's a great sword mixed in with a longsword and it's an axe, and at the end, it still has a special attack. Now, the first special attack that you are going to get with the axe is going to be Flight of Ruin. Now, Flight of Ruin is not really an attack that I personally care about all that much at this point. You're going to be using it when you're starting out because you have no other choice, and the way the attack works is you press 
uh, whatever button you have for your special attack, which in my case, I'm using a DualShock 4, it's gonna be R1, and it's going to throw the ax forward, and it's gonna be spinning, and it's gonna deal damage while it's spinning against the monster, but the damage it's dealing is not gonna be all that impressive, so don't think like, oh man, I'm gonna keep that thing spinning on the monster, it's gonna be awesome. That damage is not that great. The most important thing is that before the axe returns to your character, you wanna hit that special attack button again. Your character is going to pick up the axe and slam it down on top of the behemoth. Hopefully, if you aim properly, if you don't aim properly, you're gonna slam the ground. It's not gonna really do anything. But if you slam that final attack on top of the behemoth, you're going to deal massive amounts of damage. It's gonna feel really satisfying. It really reminded me of Kratos in the latest God of War because he has an attack that feels just like that. I use that attack all the time. But yeah, it's a really fun attack to do and you're gonna be using that attack. That is going to be what allows you to power up the uh, determination gauge that we talked about uh, earlier, which basically you're gonna wanna land those charge attacks on the behemoths. And after you land the charge attacks enough to charge up that bar all the way, then you wanna land one of those special attacks on top of him. However, you don't have to wait until the bar is full to use a special attack. Use the special attack pretty much on cooldown if you are able to, because the special attack also contributes towards filling up that gauge. So it's always useful to do, and it also deals a ton of damage, and on top of it, it is extremely fun to perform. So uh, that is how the determination gauge works. So as you can imagine, your objective is always going to be charge up your attacks as much as possible, because the more you charge up your attacks, the more the determined gauge is going to fill. As a matter of fact, if your attack is not charged, the determination gauge does not fill at all. So while you will deal damage, it's not going to be particularly impressive damage, and you're not uh, progressing your weapon along in order to be able to level it up in terms of damage, in order to be able to dish out more and more damage as the fight continues. So keep that in mind. You always want to try to charge your attacks. If the monster is being too fast and you're having a tough time keeping your attacks to charge up to max, don't charge them up to max. Charge them up to level one, charge them up to level two. Just try to charge it up at least once so that you can get a little bit of gauge so that you can then get your ax to start dealing more damage. And once again, remember that probably one of the combos that you want to master at the beginning is the vertical slice into horizontal slice and more horizontal slice and more horizontal slice. And I know that I say horizontal slice and the attacks that are coming off are vertical, but those are the command inputs that I'm putting in. If you actually go into the move list, it will tell you vertical attack, horizontal attack, even though that had nothing horizontal about it, but them's the kicks. Anyway, if you can fully charge it up and then do these three attacks in a row, you're going to gain a significant portion of the determination gauge. That is what you want to master for now. And now you guys are going to go, well, what about if I just do the other combo? When would I want to do the other combo finisher, just like vertical attacks? Well, the only reason to do that is usually if your attack speed is not that great and you happen to catch a massive opening on a behemoth, you can actually dish out some serious damage with the vertical attacks, but it is still not the most optimal thing in my opinion. But basically, once you finish it, you get this. And you can slam it down on the behemoth repeatedly. And it's really good because each of these attacks will charge up your gauge and as you can see it starts getting faster. But again, the damage is not impressive and it demands you to be standing still. Whereas if you are doing the other combo, you can actually adjust the direction that you are facing. As you guys can see, look at how much I changed. I did a full 180 in the middle of that combo. And that is something that you want to keep in mind because just because you've you failed the first attack, doesn't mean you have to fail the next ones if you just start spinning the axe around. You can do this by moving the analog stick or whatever movement keys you are using if you're using the keyboard. So just keep that in mind, adjust your movements depending on the behemoth's uh, movements as well so that you can keep landing those attacks. So now let's talk about the special attack that actually matters, which is the one that you're going to get at level eight. It is called the Grim Onslaught and it just might be the most satisfying special attack in this whole damn game as far as i'm concerned people might disagree with it they're wrong it's their you know they're okay it's okay for them to be wrong but this is the coolest special attack in dauntless and again i'm sorry if you don't agree you're wrong it's, it's okay to be wrong but you're wrong i just want you to know that anyway the special attack is like this bang you throw your axe, it actually becomes an item that is like, it's there. Like, I don't have an axe right now, my axe is there. After a while, the axe will return to your character, naturally, if you wait around uh, long enough, because sometimes you'll throw your axe off a cliff, and you know, then you have to wait. Other times, the axe will come back instantly, it depends. 
But you can also pick it back up and then you get to instantly, you know, keep attacking with your axe. So the idea here is you throw the axe and then you pick it back up, ideally as it is coming down, because it will do like an arc thing as it's coming back if you actually hit. Because if you miss, the axe is going to go really far away. Like here's an example. I'm going to try to throw it in this general direction. Look at how much it traveled. That's quite a distance. So basically, if you happen to miss often, then this is going to be a challenging weapon for you. Uh, if you throw your axe off a cliff again, sometimes it will uh, come back. Other times it will glitch out. Sometimes the axe glitches out. I'm sorry, it's still beta. All of that usual stuff. Uh, I've had instances where I was, every time I threw my axe, I basically was out of the fight for like 30 seconds waiting for the axe to come back. But either way, it still doesn't change the fact that it is one of the most satisfying specials in the game. Um, the other thing is that when you do throw the axe, you'll notice that there is usually a marker indicating where the axe is going to land so that you can position yourself to pick up the axe instantly and continue to dish out damage onto the behemoth. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, but I actually like Flight of Ruin a little bit more. It feels more satisfying to throw it and pick it back up and then dropping it on top of the behemoth. That feels really cool. And I also like the little bits of damage that it deals while it's sawing the behemoth there. Uh, but in my opinion, I actually think that from an efficiency standpoint, the Grim Onslaught is the better choice. And I'm going to tell you why. For starters, every time you throw the axe, there's a wind-up animation for if your character like actually doing the animation to throw the axe. Uh, but on top of that, when it comes to Flight of Ruin, not only you do that animation when you throw it, you're also doing that animation when you're picking it up and slamming it onto the behemoth. So, you're essentially doing two long wind-up animations instead of one. And uh, during those long wind-up animations, you're still going to take damage, you're still taking chances against the behemoth, and in the case of Flight of Ruin, you actually have to be in melee range of the behemoth to level up your special. Whereas with Grim Onslaught, there is one wind-up animation, there is a lot more reach than a Flight of Ruin, and to top it off, you're able to level up your Determination Gauge from a ranged position, and you're also able to boop monsters using the... It's just like, in my opinion, the Graham Onslaught has so many advantages that from an efficiency standpoint, there isn't even an argument in favor of the other special, which in a lot of ways actually leaves me a little bit disappointed. I'm like, man, I wish that this would be an alternative as opposed to just like, nope, this one's better. Uh, and then you also have uh, the mods that you can put on the hammer. One of those mods is uh, actually pretty good, depending on how much you use your horizontal uh, attack, which I don't really use it all that much other than to finish the vertical attack combo. But if you want to do that, you can get lightweight haft. I believe that you get this at level 12 or something. And the uh, lightweight haft essentially increases your movement speed while you are charging your horizontal attacks and they cost no stamina to maintain. So basically you can run around with a fully charged level three attack all over the battlefield, moving slightly faster than normal. And um, you're not expending stamina, so you can just keep that thing charging forever until you land it onto the monster. So that's a good one. Uh, one of the first ones that they'll give you is Volatile Axe Core. It's just not that great. It deals AoE damage while you are charging uh, your axe, but that AoE damage is pretty negligible. And then you have the one that I use, which is Overcharged Cylinder, which allows you to charge up your Determination Gauge one more time, which will increase the amount of damage your axe is dealing quite a bit more and you know i'm all about that deeps now another thing to keep in mind when you are playing with the axe is that the axe is an extremely stamina intensive weapon so if you can avoid running with your weapon drawn please do otherwise you're going to be out of stamina every time by the time you get to the monster it is a bit of a patience game when it comes to the axe as a matter of fact i think that that is actually a practice that you should try to do with most weapons avoid running with your weapon out otherwise you're needlessly expending your stamina like if you really need to run then of course run run to avoid attacks run to all that stuff but don't run out of sheer greed like don't run towards the monster just because you want to get there faster like think ahead you want to get there faster yes but you also want to get there with a full stamina gauge so that you can unleash the full power of your weapon okay so keep that in mind so now that you know the basics of how the axe work, which combos to do, what each special does, the, all the different modifiers and all that stuff, you'll probably be eager to get out there and hunt some behemoths on your own. And at this point, you'll start to think about builds. Like, oh, what perks should I prioritize when working on an axe build? And in my opinion, one of the first things that you'll want to get for the axe as fast as you can is get something that gives it attack speed. So for instance, if you're really good at dodging through behemoth attacks, try to get something that gives you evasive fury. So 
so Ember main equipment is a good source of evasive fury early in the game. Uh, another good thing is the Ember main lantern. You will be able to um, gain short bursts of attack speed by using the instant ability of the lantern, which is pretty good. If you're further along in the game, you might consider something like Conduit, and you might even combine that with Aetheric Attunement, which is going to basically allow you to use your lantern more often, and when you use the hold ability of your lantern, you will gain a burst of attack speed. All of that is good stuff. And then later down the line, you might consider something like Wild Frenzy combined with Iceborne, which is going to give you an attack speed that is a little bit more of a risky playstyle, but you know, it's all going to depend on the type of player that you are. There's probably more perks that will give you uh, attack speed that I'm not mentioning here. These are just some of the ones that I'm thinking off of the top of my head. Now, beyond attack speed, when it comes to damage, I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody knows that it's all about that overpower. Just get as much overpower as you possibly can, and you're probably going to be golden. Rage Hunter is another good one. Knockout King can also work, because another thing about the Grim Onslaught attack is that it actually deals a significant amount of stagger damage. I've gotten just about as much staggers with my axe as I've gotten with my hammer. Maybe I just don't know how to play hammer properly. I guess I I could probably get like one or two more staggers with the hammer depending on which monster we're fighting but I can tell you right now I get a lot of staggers with the axe and it's brutally satisfying because you can get staggers from a distance with Grim Onslaught it is that good anyway in my next video I will show you guys the build that I'm currently using in my axe and I'm uh, working on different builds for the weapons I'll start uh, probably the next tips video that I'll have is going to be about the hammer let me know how you guys are doing in Dauntless in the comment section down below thank you all very much for watching if you are new here if you like these videos subscribe hit the bell notification icon so that you're actually notified when my videos come out smash that like button stay strong and may your shields never break